Good morning and welcome to season two of The Review, the Instagram live podcast where Kanama news, culture, and stories are shared over the warmth of coffee. Guys, I am incredibly excited to join Timothée, Tim from Kanama France or Native Kanama, wherever you know him from, for an incredible conversation over the warmth of coffee. I'm super excited for this one. You guys know, as per usual, we're drinking a fresh cup, but... The other thing is we've been on a European kick lately. We had, we've had Ben Conte on recently. We had Tio. Last week we had Eric from, oh my gosh, from Da O, from Da Origins. And I am just loving it. The European Kendama crew is just humble, genuine, and they love the game. And I just want to be in Europe with them. So guys, I'm super excited for today's episode with Tim. We're going to be talking about his Kendama journey. Uh, Alongside that, we're going to be talking about uh, his performance with Francis Got Talent, the performance that he duoed with Tio from Grain Theory. And along with that, we're going to be talking through one of the, probably the greatest edits that I've seen come out in the past couple of years called Stay on Your Tablet, which in some regards, the naming is a result of that uh, event at Francis Got Talent, where one of the judges said to Tim and to Tio, he would rather have his kids stay on their tablet than play Kendama. And they took that as a chip on their shoulder to go and create uh, an edit to show them that, no, I think you would rather play Kanama than be on your tablet. And so we're going to be diving into that story. We're going to be digging into the French Kanama scene, digging into Tim's life, getting to know Native Kanama, and so much more today. But as per usual, I want to know, what are you drinking this morning as you guys tune in to the review? And if you didn't notice, we're in a different background today. I took a little road trip up to Edmonton to, to come hang out with some Kendama homies up here to see some of my family that I haven't seen in a little bit and to spend some time with friends. So if you were on my stories this morning, you would have seen that I was hanging out with my friend Nathan. He made me a nice breakfast. We brewed coffee and we went over to a little cafe nearby called Brown Butter Cafe and got a nice pour over, had a great conversation with the barista there. It was just fantastic. I haven't had that experience in such a long time where I could just go and chat with a barista, talk nerdy coffee things, and it was just so good. So let's see what you guys are drinking this morning. Tim is here, and he is drinking tea. Adrian Esteban also drinking some green tea. Josh Murray with iced tea. What is this, guys? So much tea this morning. Where is my coffee gang at? Uh, as you keep letting me know what you're drinking this morning, I also want to know uh, what questions you have for Tim. Now, you guys know that this is a live conversation that we host every week on the IGs, and you guys can participate in it by asking questions, either on the post ahead of time or by putting them in the Q&A tool down below. That's that little question mark down at the bottom, and you can have your questions asked during today's episode. We usually set aside two times to talk through them. I see, okay, we got a couple coffee guys in here today, along with Ben Conte drinking some fresh water. We got Dustin A. Nut just brewed his medium roast. Adrian Esteban, you are right. Brew is gang. All right, guys, without further ado, we are going to get our friend Tim on here for this week's brew view. Tim, I'm sending you the invite. Let's get him on. The rumor has it that we might get a guest appearance from Mr. Ben Conte as well, as he might be hanging out with Tim. Let's give Tim a moment. Tim! Bonjour! Bonjour! Je m'appelle Adam! Comment se passe tu? <laughs> Ça va? How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Hey, Tim, do you want to just lift up your camera a little bit? We can only see the bottom of your mouth there. Oh, yeah. Wait. Just like this? That's perfect. That's great. Tim, oh my goodness. What a pleasure and joy it is to, to be able to connect with someone from another part of the world that I have never been to. <laughs> it's pretty incredible. Yeah, what? it's really cool to be here. I'm really happy. And I have a little bit, a little bit of pressure. It's been a long time that I didn't speak English since all the <laughs> COVID situation, but yeah, it will be good. I, I, I was told by a little bird, one of my sources, I got sources all over the world, Tim. One, one of my sources said that you might be a little nervous to speak English, and so they recommended we, we play a little game to kick things off. And they, this, this source of mine told me that you really enjoy English words that either start with a vowel or start with an H, that you really enjoy <laughs> pronouncing these words. Is this, is this true? Yeah, yeah. I have some problem with the H, you know? <laughs> I think it's the French blood. Yeah, yeah, so my, my source told me to, to see if you'd be willing to pronounce a couple words for us to, to kick things off for this week's episode. So I'll say them in English, 
and for for the fun of it, uh, do you want, do you want to pronounce them as well? And we'll we'll warm things up this way. Uh, so so my first word that this person had told me, you may know who it is, but I'm not. I can't leak my sources. I'm a I'm a iron wall over here. But my source says uh, the word hotel is a good word to ask you to say. <laughs> yeah, hot hotel. You know, <laughs> hotel. Like naturally, we just pronounce it without the H. I pronounce it without the H. Yeah. So I had some problem with like one of my favorite tricks, which is Handelstall. Oh, and you call it Andelstall. Yeah, and no one understand it. And it was weird when I was talking about it. <laughs> okay, so the first word was hotel and you pronounce it hotel. What about yeah. the word ant? Like the ant that crawls along the ground. Ah, ant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and so for that word, you actually put an H in front of it and you, you say hand. Yeah, it's quite random in my brain. I try to work on that. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so f funny. Yeah, uh, Adrian Esteban put down in the chat. Can you, can you read uh, that trick is hard? Yeah, that trick is hard. Hard. <laughs> That's awesome. Hard. We, we, <laughs> we, we won't drag this out too long by any means, but I thought it'd be a fun way. And, and obviously this person knows you very, very well and, and thought it would be a fun way to, you know, break, break the English ice a little bit and, and dive into the convo. T Tim, what time is it for you? It's uh, seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, okay. okay. Yeah. I, I just finished my tea and now I'm drinking a beer with you. So hey. it's Fantastic. All sorts of brews. What kind of tea were you drinking? Uh, green tea, like Esteban. It was a gunpowder. It's okay. quite, you know. Do, oh, did you make it like a matcha tea, like the powder? Uh, no, no, no. It's just like, I have a okay. box of like, it's like, a, I don't know, small green okay. stuff, which like get bigger yeah. and <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay, so I, in these interviews, I don't know if you've listened to a ton of them. I always like to ask three warm-up questions and then we'll, we'll ease into a conversation. And, and I want to get to know your story a little bit. I know so many people, you know, my, the audience that listens to this podcast is mostly American and most of them have never been to Europe. And I think, I don't know if they like fantasize it, but we always love getting into the European story because there's just something cool happening over there. You guys are doing such cool work with uh, Kenoma France. Guys, your edits are amazing. I can't <laughs> not watch them. They're so freaking good. So I want to dive into that a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about your side of the story for France has Got Talent and talk about uh, the most recent video that you guys put out or a large scale one, Stay on Your Tablet, because I think that is one of the greatest Kenoma films that has ever come out. And I love it so freaking much. So I want to talk about that today. Um, along with that, uh, we'll, we'll dive into a little bit of your story. We'll talk some future stuff and, and have some fun with it. Uh, how does that sound to you? Yeah, it's perfect. Beauty. Well, we already asked you what you're drinking today, uh, but I also like to know, always, I ask this question every week, if you could teach any one person their first spike, past or present, who would you want to teach? Oh, wow. I forgot about this question to like... <laughs> No way. Okay. Um, maybe it will be fun for me to just learn the first bike to Toplar, which introduced me to Kendama. So it will oh. be like a typical, like I just show him a spike and after he show me a spike and after we get crazy he, with it. Absolutely. Is he from France? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's, he was a, a, one of my best friends and like we were roommates like before and we just like slay together like a lot of hours. That's awesome. Does he still play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in what? Paris right now and he's like in Native. He was in Native before me and okay. it was always a motivation for me to like just play Kendama. That's awesome. And so he was the guy that taught you Kendama first. He introduced you? Yeah, yeah. That's super cool. We'll, we'll probably dive into that story a little bit here in a, in a hot minute. Um, but before we do, I also want to know who is the most inspiring Kanama player for you today? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I have many answers. I think everyone has many answers. I know, for so this. many. There's so many great players. Yeah, yeah. Like, for me, all the Euro squad is really inspiring, inspiring me, like Tio, Eric, Ole, and many more people. And for the game, I think it's uh, Ben Herald for how he mm. sees a Kendama and 
Yeah, I don't know. I met him like I don't know two years ago, and mm. yeah, it was really interesting to like see yeah. how Kendama is in, and yeah. Did Did you meet Ben when he came out with GT for the Euro Tour? Was that when you met him? Yeah, That's yeah cool. when the Euro Tour. Did, have you ever been outside of Europe for Kendama? Have you gone to any events outside of Europe yet? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. I, I just did Europe. Soon, though, right? Next year, you're going to be traveling all over the world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to go to the United States and to yeah. Japan also. But, well, hey, what about Canada, man? You're going to come hang out yeah, with yeah, us? Yeah, Canada. Sorry, too. <laughs> but yeah, we're... There, so it will not improve my English, you know? Yeah, well, you could... Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a French population out here, the Quebecois. Yeah. Their French is very different, though. It's very dirty. It's, uh, it's like a, a rustic French, you know? It's very slang and and yeah, and yeah, it's very famous here in France, like everyone. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not very good French. It's different for sure. I I went to a French school when I was in the the seventh grade, and I, I got kicked out. I wasn't very good at French, but I remember <laughs> learning a little bit. I still remember like a few things, like uh, you know, you, you remember all the bad words that you're supposed to not say and all that kind of stuff. But I I remember my favorite thing to say to people in French is like "tu es le jus de caca." you know, call them poop juice or something like that. And it's like, that's my favorite French line to ever use with people. It's like, okay, nice, je m'appelle nice Adam, uh, tu es le jus de caca. Nice, nice. Yeah. You, oh. you can come to France and like be a French man, like easy. Easy, yeah. I could, I could fake my way, you know. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, um, Tim, before we dive in, I want to remind those of you that are tuning in live to this conversation that you can participate by leaving a question down below in the Q&A tool. If you put them down in the chat, we're probably going to miss them. So drop them in the Q&A tool and we will do our best to get to your questions in today's episode. If you were ahead of the ball and you drop them on the post, they're already in the show notes and they're ready to be asked. So, okay, Tim, here's what I want to know. I want to, I want to go back in time a little bit. I want to know who Tim was before Kanamo. How old were you? when you picked up Kendama and what were you doing beforehand? Uh, what I, uh, I barely remember what I was doing before Kendama. Uh, I was playing League of Legends. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I was in high school and I was 16. Okay. Yeah, 16. Okay, and in high school, 16 years old, playing League. What, what lane did you play? I, I was bot lane, like I was support and after ADC, you know, I oh, like it. Yeah. Were you, were you really good at League of Legends? No, 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 no. We, we just, yeah, we played a lot with some friends, but yeah, yeah, I was not pretty good. Like gold, maybe. Okay. That's pretty good. The average players in the silver range. So yeah, shout out to all the League of Legends players in the chat. I just got back into it. My, I had been uh, avoiding it for a long time. One of my roommates plays, and Kareem, one, one of my one of my best Kanama friends, he he also plays, and so they've been convincing me, and I just got back into. It. I'm doing my my what what is it called prelims, where you find out your yeah. placements, yeah, or placement mm -hmm. matches. So we're gonna see where we end up. Probably like bronze or wood division. Who knows? Game figures are all the Kanama people who play League of Legends. There's so many. Yeah, so I many. think so. It's, nice. same, it's the same tryhard and yeah, there is something like in Dama in this kind of game, I, I think. Yeah. So, okay, you were in high school. You're like 16 years old when you pick up Kendama. What were your plans before Kendama? Did you, how, what grade would have you been in? How does the school system in, in Europe work? I, do you graduate at like the 12th grade? Is that the same? Uh, I never like, uh, I'm just, I, I never know how to compare the French school system mm -hmm. with uh, all the other school system but yeah you get your like final exam at 18 okay. and after you can go to university or in junior school or other things and uh, i at this point i really don't know what i wanted to do with my life just like going to school and having fun and yeah i don't know i was not thinking about that I still don't think about that, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I take you for the kind of guy that just takes life as it comes and just enjoys the everyday moments that come your way. Is that, is that true? Yeah, I try to do that. <laughs> yeah. did, did you end up going to university or college or anything like that after school? Yeah, yeah. So um, I was uh, in, the, in a school like in Nevers. It's like in Burgundy, the center of France. It's a small city, mm -hmm. like 30,000 people. And uh, after I just went to physics university 
uh, in Lyon, where I'm here right now. And so are you a student right now? No, no, no. I, I stopped my, at uh, my first year of master two years ago for Kendama friends. And uh, yeah, I had like a, a bachelor, I think it's in okay. English. Yeah, 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 that sounds right. That's cool. So yeah. you did your degree in physics? Yeah. So, so you're, you're a smart guy, you know, you, you understand how things work. <laughs> uh, I don't know, like, I was like weird in the physics stuff. Like I was just loving to do all the exercise, but mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't like going deeper in the physics stuff. Okay. So I just like enjoy it, but I think I was not fit for this kind of uh, study. Sure. So, okay, so then bring me into the Kendama world a little bit for you. You were 16 when you picked it up. What did that look like for you? How did that kickstart and what was that early journey like for you? Yeah, so like to uh, Thomas showed me like uh, the Kendama and we had a friend who was Bilboke, which is yeah. Karad. He's also like playing Kendama and in, he's in the Kendama friends team. And uh, Thomas wanted to buy it for Louis and we just forgot to buy it for him. So three months later, I think I, I saw Toma with the Kendama and I was like, oh, you buy it. Let's try it. And yeah, I just like start doing some cups and I was like, okay, I, I need one right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, the funny thing is when I, die, when I buy a Kendama, Kendama friends just open and I buy my first Kendama and Kendama friends. So it was quite cool for me right now, like to That's think about it. Yeah, that's all. Uh, what year was this for you? Like, how many years ago? It was six years. Like, it was uh, okay. like six years ago, yeah. Okay. And do you remember which Kendama you bought? What the first one was? Yes, it was a chrome wine. Okay. Like, yeah, I... it's not so famous. Like, it was like a red Tama with no tracking and like old oh. shape. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the one you're talking about. I, I never had one of those. That's, that's pretty OG. That's a classic yeah. <laughs> Kendama. Absolutely. And so you, you picked up that for your first Kendama. And what did the first couple months of playing look like? You, you just started playing. Were you playing with other people or mostly just by yourself? Uh, I was playing alone because like uh, Louis and uh, Thomas was already like in the studio in Lyon and in Grenoble. So yeah, I was just playing alone. And when I see them, like we were playing Game of Ken. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we just push ourselves together to like, like better at Kendama and lending new tricks. It was really fun. Yeah. That's good. So when did, when did it become more serious for you? So you were obviously, you've been playing for now six years and it's become a pretty important part of your life now. You know, you're a partner <laughs> with Kendama France. You're sponsored by Native Kendama. You literally were on a stage that, that, you know, performed in front of a, over a million people that saw that performance. And, <laughs> and you've been in all these like Kendama movies. You've been traveling around hosting events. You like, at some point, something changed, right? Between you just playing in your room to you saying like, no, I want this to be a part of my life. When did uh, that happen? Yeah. Um, I think it happens when Thomas went to uh, EKC, like in, I don't know when it was, like maybe in 2017, like in the summer of 2017, he went to EKC and he told me about Kendama events. And at this point I was like, okay, I, I need to try. It looks really cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went to my first Kendama event, which was uh, Spag Dama in uh, 2018. Mm -hmm. It's where I met Tio, Ole, uh, and a lot of other guys in the Euro squad. And uh, yeah, at this point, I just like, okay, I want to do as many Kendama events as I can. Mm -hmm. And I just like went to yeah all the Kendama events and I started to like... Uh, went less uh, go less to the to my university and uh, yeah just playing and after i get sponsored by kendama friends so like it was it became more serious and yeah mm -hmm. so you now <laughs> so the the first event you went to was spike dama what was that like it was really chill and really like cozy like we didn't know how what is a kendama event we didn't know anyone thomas would knowing like some people and yeah it, i just asked question to everyone and wanted to know the life and try to get better with my english because it was really bad at this time 
And yeah, I just see that as an opportunity to just like discover life, I think, and in a way, and it was really like satisfying. Where, where was that event? Because you were, you were, where, where in France were you living at the time? What? Where in France were you living when you went to that event? Uh, I'm, uh, I, I was living in Lyon and uh, okay. even Pagnes. It's uh, Where's near, that? Uh, wait, I don't like it. I'm not sure where it is now. <laughs> Like Lionel or like some okay. people know in the chat, I think where is Pekinis exactly in Netherlands? But okay, yeah, so it was in the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what, did you drive there or did you fly there? Yeah, we we take the car of Louis and we just drove there and like we took an Airbnb and yeah, just That's send it. Were you nervous at all going to that event for the first time? Like you, you hadn't met anyone outside of your like two or three friends that played and you're just like, I guess we're going to this thing. What did you expect? Uh, first, I was really excited and I feel the pressure when we arrive at the venue and there was like all these Kendama people that I don't know. And I was like, okay, wow. It feels a long time that I didn't feel like myself like this. Like, okay, you have to meet people, you have to talk with them to play with them and it was really chill and I just feel comfortable after like yeah mm -hmm. that's awesome uh so and, and now obviously like you're really well known in the Kanama scene in Europe particularly I think and and definitely growing a lot more in influence outside of Europe as well but uh when you first went to these events did were you, did you consider yourself to be pretty good at Kanama and was it like a competition did you show up and realize that there were other people that were really good or did you feel like you were pretty good already? No, no, I was like, I went there to see the real level of Kendama. I knew that mm. I wasn't like, I was an intermediate player and just wanted to like learn from other Kendama people who were like stronger or worse than me, but it was just like interesting to interact with all of them but i knew at this point that i was not like a top player and mm -hmm. and i didn't really care it was just like really cool for me to go there and discover like the kendama community mm -hmm. i think that's something that's really interesting about the european kendama scene from what i've seen is there's so many events that it's not actually that competitive in terms of like it's not about who's the best or who wins it's it's more of like a community thing you just kind of go to these events to be with the people and someone happens to win and it's like a fun time and you like to compete but whenever i watch the videos from european kendama events they just look like everybody's there to just be with one another hang out play kendama meet new people engage and it's a very adult community right like it's an older community did, was that weird at first that you were playing this children's game and then showed up to these like adult communities? Did did that ever feel conflicting to you? Uh, no, it was never weird for me because I we never played with kids, even in France yeah. or in Europe. And it just started to become uh, weird when I went to Estonia uh, last year, I think. Like when I saw all the kids and mm -hmm. I was... I was with Rolf and all the kids were crazy about him. Like he's a superstar and I was like, <laughs> oh, wow, there is this part of Kendama too. And I was really impressed. And I'm really happy that I didn't start in this kind of stuff. Because yeah, like, as you said, like all the events are so chill and it's mm -hmm. for me like a music festival, which you just go to have fun a weekend in a place, in a random place with all your friends, you know, from Kendama and you just know it's going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So you've traveled a lot throughout Europe now. You've been to a lot of different events. Which one's your favorite that you've been to? Oh. <laughs> uh, which Kendama events? Hmm. I really love the DAO opening, which was my last event, like before, like this summer. It was yeah. really cool to see a friend we opened his Kendama shop and we had like a big place. Oh yeah. Uh, and there is also a super stoker in Finland. Yeah. There is two Kendama events. Cool. So you went to uh, Eric's opening of Da'o. Yeah. What, what was that like? We, we had Eric on the show last week to, to chat a little bit about his story. Um, but did you know Eric pretty well beforehand, before he launched his store? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I met him. In the uh, Kendama attack, which was like three years ago, 
And okay. we met in Italy. And after he was part of the Euro squad, when we just met at all these different Kendama events, but we were all at the at all the Kendama events. So it was like I see I see him more than some friend I have in Lyon. Mm -hmm. like, He and he travels a lot too. Like I, I remember yeah. chatting with him last week. He went out of his way to meet people because he's like, I want to start this company, but I need to know people. I need to meet people, show them the product, all this kind of stuff. So he worked really hard to meet people as well. So kind of met halfway there a bit. That's super cool. Oh. Um, can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah perfect. I thought it lagged out there for a second. Okay, um, okay, I'm I'm curious. So you you traveled around a bit and and you got involved in all these events. You were going to you know events left and right. From my chats with Tio and some of the other European Kanama players, there's just a lot of events. And and you use the language you called it Euro Squad. I'm really curious. Is Euro Squad just like what you call anyone who plays Kanama in Europe, or is that a specific group of people you're referring to? And if so, who is that group? Uh, yeah, from Euro Squad is all the. European Yomi, and we are too much to like give the name of all the people. But yeah, I just feel like we kind of a family, and we just like reunited. And sometimes there is not this guy, sometimes there is this other guy. But it's yeah, I don't know if there is like really like some people which are the Euro, Euro Squad or not. Everyone yeah. is a Euro Squad in Europe. Well, okay. So my question is, Tim, how do I join the Euro Squad? Because it seems like such a fun group to be a part of. How do I, what do But I need to do? <laughs> you just have to come to like all the country and come to all the Kendama house. Like you come here in Lyon, you go to Eric's place, you go to Tio's place and you go to and all the place you can where you can play Kendama and you... And, you then, I'm on the, and, and then I'm in the squad. Yeah, yeah, and just like rent or buy a house in Europe, and you're in the Euro Squad. Easy. I I can already speak a couple French words, so I'm kind of partly yeah. there, right? So I'm working on it. We're trying. We're 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 trying to get there, you know. <laughs> yeah, you also have to speak French to be part of the Euro Squad. I do. Okay, I need to brush up. I, my, uh, <laughs> je parle français, c'est très terrible. Uh, yeah, not good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool okay so i want to know and i think most people want to know is uh when did you join kanama france and when did you join native kanama and how did that journey kick off for you because obviously i think for a lot of people the the moment where someone gets sponsored by a company is the moment that kanama becomes like very real for you uh what was that like for you and how did that happen uh it started in uh, 2017 And uh, Kendama Friends was launching like a team which was called Kendama Friends. And uh, I was just in it because I, uh, Thomas, who introduced me to Kendama, was already a pro native. So I met uh, the Kendama Friends guy, who is Thierry and Alexis, who like start Kendama Friends. Mm -hmm. And uh, one year after, the, I became native pro. So yeah, it was like really, I was really happy and to like be part of the native and to have all the good stuff, the French stuff. Yeah. And at this point, I really start to go to all the Kendama events to like have a, a native booth at the event and just show the shape. And one year after in 2019, I start working for Kendama Friends. And uh, my life completely changed at this point. I was just like, I stopped my study and I like all, all this. Yeah. And my flight and my bed. Is this, are you at the Kenoma France store or are you at your house? Uh, it's the same. So oh, cool. like my flat is Kenoma France for now. Like this oh. is my room and I work there and yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So... Uh, yeah, talk to me a little bit about Kendama France, because I think for most of us in, in North America, we don't really know what Kendama France is, aside from this incredible media production company that puts out insanely good edits and sells Kendamas. But what is Kendama France? Okay, so I will give you the full story. So yeah. It started in 2015, and uh, Thierry like, opened Kendama France on the internet, and uh, he like, under it in his garage. And uh, he, uh, after uh, two years, he started working with uh, Alexi, 
Mm-hmm. Which is now the, who is now the graphic designer of the of the brand and of Kendama Friends? Is is that Alex uh, Alex G Photo the guy who does the videos, or is this a no, different guy? Yeah, this guy is uh, my roommate also, so he lives in Kendama Friends too, and he's like uh, the community manager of uh, Kendama Friends okay. and Alex, which uh, Instagram name is A L eight X S. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Okay, I know, I know who that guy on on Instagram. So that's yeah, the guy yeah. who does the graphic design. Yeah, yeah, and he also like just work at Kendama Friends, mm-hmm. and uh, and they, they opened a shop in uh, 2018 in uh, Chambéry, which is a smaller city than mm-hmm. Lyon, and they just like get uh, a Kendama shop in a random like in their city. So it was really cool and really motivating. It was really a motivation for me to continue Kendama because I see growing in France. And uh, after one year, it's uh, at this point that they contact me because they wanted to like get bigger and the shop in Chambéry was uh, not uh, worth it mm-hmm. because the city was too small and Kendama was not what Kendama is right now in France. So they just transfer all the shops in my flat and in my room and now it's been two years that I work with them and we just like yeah dealing all the kendama in Europe and it's really like satisfying and like I enjoying it enjoying it a lot that's awesome so uh, what what is your job at kendama France do you do the packaging and fulfillment what what's your what's your job I have many tasks like I I just handle the project like every day. Like I do the package, I'll do the customer service. Mm-hmm. I do the, all the money stuff like contability. Is it English? Uh, like the accounting? Yeah, the accounting. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, I organize event. Uh, I don't know all the stuff which like is like linked to Kendama friends. I do it with Alexander, which like helped me and, uh, to just learn me stuff. I mm-hmm. took also the picture for the Kendama that we put on the website and mm-hmm. uh, tried to film the video because I'm still Native Pro too. So yeah. Yeah, so, uh, it, yeah. Is, is Native and Kendama France connected? Are they like partnered or w- w- what is the relationship there? Because I think for me, I think they're two different things, but then I see you working for both of them and I don't, what, what's the overlap and, and how are they different? Basically, Native is a Kendama brand of Kendama Friends. Okay, so it's, it's under the brand Kendama. Of Kendama. Oh, that so uh, Native Kendama is underneath of Kendama Friends. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's our brand, so we can deal our brand in our shop, and it's really cool. So we can touch everything in the Kendama. We don't, we not only like sell other brand, and we can like produce our Kendama with our design. That's super cool. And and so it obviously started out as just uh, uh, selling other companies' Kanamas. At what point did you guys decide that you were going to uh, make your own? Uh, Native start in uh, 2016 with Alex and Sherry. And they just like, it was like kind of the dream to deal Kendama and produce their own brand. So they just like did it. And they... Uh, go to uh, a region of France where there's a lot of woodworker and they just ask all of them like, can you do that? Can you do that? And they find one and they just like try to improve their shape and try to improve all the Tama and all this stuff. That's so cool. I didn't know that it was the same company that was, that was running both of them. And that makes so much sense, but I think that's a hey, first off. Okay. So I think it's really cool that you guys were able to build a real functioning business out of selling other companies' brands because, I mean, I, I do distrib- distribution for Solkanamas uh, here in Canada. I love it. Um, but, you know, like for, I think, a lot of wholesalers and distributors, they don't see it as like a, a potential business or like a, a larger thing. It's kind of like, oh, no, I, I get to do this on the side of whatever I'm doing. But you guys went full on, heads deep into it. And you're like, no, 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 we're going to do this and we're going to make it big. Uh, because Kendama France is big now. Like you guys serve a very large group of people. I'm looking behind you. You got hundreds of Kendamas behind you. That's insane. That's big. <laughs> um, and so I, I didn't realize that they were the same company and that you were able to produce your own Kendamas and sell other brands. 
uh, I think that's just fascinating. That's really cool. And what I find beautiful in this project is it is be, is like uh, we just start now to live thanks Kendama friends, but it's just like really recent. And in 2015, like no one like earn money with Kendama friends. It was just full patient job, and we just like give our time to like develop mm -hmm. this project. And we like really a family and it's really cool to work all together and we all have different age and it's really cool to take decision because like we all have a, a different way to see life and to see like all the business and mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, okay. You, you have people on the Kendama France team. I think of a guy like uh, Ben, Ben Conte. He's on, he's on the Kendama France team. Uh, is he also on the native Kinda or the native Kendama team? What? Is Ben also on native Kendama? Uh, no, Ben is our Kendama friends ambassador. So it's and... two separate things there, right? So you can, like you, you're on both Kendama France and native, but then there's some people that are only on Kendama France and some people that are only on native Kendama. How does that work uh, for you guys? Because it's the same company, but it's a little bit different. Because if I'm a yeah. Kendama France ambassador, can I also because you guys sell native Kendama, do I also get to be an ambassador for native? Yeah, we try to just separate like uh, Kendama friends and native. Like native is really functioning like, uh, I know, a brand and yeah. Kendama friends is a reseller. So yeah, for us, it's quite chill to just do like two different things. But the nice thing is we can hook up all the our Kendama friends people with native when we have them. But the native team is really like we only play native and we try to promote this stuff and the Kendama friends people can promote all the Kendama. So it's, I think it's quite cool also for us because mm -hmm. they can play all the Kendama we sell and we can just promote it and play it and try it. So it's really cool. Yeah, that's super cool. So, okay, uh, with native Kendama, tell me a little bit more about native and how native came to life. And give me a little bit of the background of the story there, because you guys take a unique approach to it as well, because you work with a local manufacturer, similar to how Eric does Dow Origins, which isn't the same way that a lot of brands do, because a lot of brands will outsource their manufacturing to China and overseas and get them produced there. But you guys are, are kind of running a similar grassroots sort of operation. Uh, talk to me a little bit about Nativ. Tell me about it. Okay, so I was not here at the creation of Nativ, but uh, so it was Terry and Alexi who created them. And that was the first shape, which uh, didn't have name, but we were all crazy when we see it for the first time. The hole were too small and uh, there was no tracking on the Tama, the paint was not sticky at all, but we were just happy to play it. And uh, like we tried to develop our shape and they made a new shape, which was called the progress shape. And uh, at this point, we were making the Tama at our local uh, manufacturer. And uh, we we just stopped at this point because it was a... Uh, fuck. Ben, Ben Luso. Sorry, uh, there is Ben just here. And he's putting the podcast at the same moment of me. And I just hear me like the return. <laughs> That's and, awesome. Uh, <laughs> you, you can Sorry, tell Ben but, uh, he's, he can come over and say hi if he wants. <laughs> ben, tu peux dire bonjour si tu veux. Bonjour, Sorry for Ben. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, so yeah, uh, tell me a little bit about Native and how, how it got started. Some, some of that story. You were, you were catching us up. Yeah, so uh, we were making the Tama, but uh, it was really hard for us to like do some design, some sticky paint. And so uh, last year we just stopped making Tamas. And uh, we made the, uh, we like ask uh, on, Henri, like in China, to make uh, it for us, to like uh, have sticky paint uh, and to have fun with all the Tama design. Mm -hmm. And uh, now also we are making the cans and we are producing the Tama like in China. Okay, so you guys get your Tamas made overseas, but then you guys make the cans in, in France. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what, is, what is this? <laughs> Native sponsor me. <laughs> Native sponsor. Is that Ben? Hi, Ben. ben. Hello. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour, bonjour. Bonjour. Uh, uh, are you drinking coffee? 
No, I'm drinking water because if I drink coffee now, I will just like stay up all night and like wake up team every ten hours. <laughs> well, somebody's got to wake him up. I apparently, according to the video that I watched, to stay on your tablet. And all Tim does is sleep. <laughs> that's, team that's likes to sleep, but, but Tim like goes to early. Eat, Tim. He goes early to bed and then he wakes up early and he sleeps during the day many times. <laughs> 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 That's awesome. We're we're gonna talk about stay on your tablet in a little bit, but while you're here, Ben, uh, I, I have a quick question for you because you had an opening scene in that in that movie. I, is it is it a movie? Is that is that what I should call it? A movie, an edit, film? What do you guys call it? Yeah, it's a movie. Uh, yeah, it's a movie. Yeah, I, I I think it's a movie. Definitely a movie. And and you have an opening trick in that, like a little bit into it, and you you did a front flip. And like down spike front flip to Tama, and I thought that was the coolest thing I've ever seen in a Kendama edit. How many attempts did that take you? We we did it together because like the whole trick yeah. is basically a round down spike, and the last down spike is a front flip. But he does the cups and I do the down spike. Yeah, and it took us three tries. Yeah, no, it didn't. No, <laughs> you did yes. not do it in three tries. Yes, we did. The boys. <laughs> That's amazing, guys. I just want to come and play Kendama with you guys. You guys are amazing. I love the vibe that you guys always put off out there in the European scene. It's just like literally, I just want to be there with you guys. I'm, I'm checking flights after this. I'm, I'm going to be there soon. <laughs> yeah, you can come here in Kendama, friends. And then I'm gonna I'm gonna get a sponsor me Nativ uh, poster and I'll I'll come outside your guys' shop and wave that around. Do you guys only sponsor French French players? What is Nativ Kanama French only? Is it for only uh, French players? It's not French only, but there is only French people in it. So I have to work on my French, is what yeah. you're telling me. Okay, so uh, I'll learn how to say sponsor me Nativ in French. How do I say sponsor? <laughs> T teach me quick. How do I say sponsor me Nativ? Sponsorize moi, Nativ. Sponsorize moi. Yeah, I'm going to have to Google search that. Because <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm Swiss. I come from Switzerland, and that's yeah. why they don't want me in it. Oh, Tim, but he's so nice. Come on. Who heads up your sponsorships there? Are you what? the one that picks the team, Tim? No, 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 no. Because I will be picking me for pro and just like... <laughs> Just me. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Okay. Well, let's jump back into the native conversation. Uh, we'll wrap it up there, uh, and then we'll we'll do a live Q and A for a little bit, and then let's jump into what kind of happened in the past year and a bit. You did Francis Got Talent and the Stay on Your Tablet edit. I want to dive into those things afterwards, and so we'll take a break after this. But. Um, and Nativ Kandama. So you guys started it, you produced your own Kens, the journey there. And obviously Nativ Kandama has kind of built uh, quite a reputation for itself. You did a recent collab with Soul Kandamas, which was amazing. I loved that collab. I didn't end up getting one of those Kandamas. I regret it. Uh, I've always wanted one. Uh, I've always wanted to play in the team. Oh, look at that. You have it right there. Dude, those things look so good. Um, what is the heartbeat behind Nativ Kandama? Tell me why Nativ is the best brand sell me on it okay what uh, i find really beautiful about native it's like we are um uh underling all the kendama like from the start to the end of the selling so we go to the uh, manufacturer and we do all the whole and we try to improve the shape at each uh, time we go there so the dad is changing a little bit and now we even call it the better dad shape <laughs> because we try to improve it, like to put some bigger cups, and there is this things which mm -hmm. arriving. Is that, and, is that uh, the new shape? Yeah, kind of. It's a better that shape. So it's kind of the that shape, but we just try to improve all the lunar balance, and uh, yeah, we'll, with all the uh, I don't know the the things like. Pro said and people who play native, we try, try to take it into consideration and to improve the shape. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it just make with love. That's why you have to buy native. <laughs> buy, buy native. Uh, do you guys ship worldwide? Do you do yeah. you ship across the world? All right, I'll, yeah, have, yeah. To look, I'll have to look into it. Shipping to Canada, man, it's so expensive. Uh, mm. it, is, it is not cheap to get Canal this year. Uh, so uh, I got to save Canada, up my... Ten euro now to ship to Canada. If Ten I euros? Yeah. 
Oh, that's not bad at all. That's that's pretty cheap. Yeah, actually, yeah, it, that's yeah. still like close to well, one. I think a Canadian dollar is almost like, uh, or every euro is like one point eight Canadian dollars or something like that. So it's like eighteen dollars or whatever for us. <laughs> Regardless, it looks like it's worth it. Um, why is it called the dad shape? Uh, okay, so I. You have to ask Alexi for really the name of it. But what sh what I really like for the dad shape is when you look at the logo, the D, the A, and the other D, if you return the other D, it's make like a sarado with two caps, a uh, sword with two caps. So mm. yeah, that shape. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, I get that. I see it. That's that's super cool. And so the, the new one is the bigger dad shape. Uh, do you guys, are you guys going to keep sticking to the... Yeah, the weekly it's expensive to ship to Canada segment from Brett Walters in the chat. It happens every week. Every time I talk to a company that's outside of Canada, it's, it's, a, it's a lifelong problem we have up here. We're, we're trying to make some changes, we're trying to bring down the monopoly that is shipping in Canada. <laughs> we're going to rise up for the name of Kendama. <laughs> um, okay, so you guys mostly make uh, striped Kendamas. Like uh, you guys got... Uh, the the dad shape has the five stripes on it. I got it here on my website. And then you got the older shape, the classic, that was kind of the triple stripe with the tracking dot on top. Are you guys looking at doing other types of designs or do you like just the striped kanamas? Yeah, yeah. Like it was uh, the two designs we made last year, which was this one, crown and track, was like kind of a test. We tried to like do, it was our first uh, Tikitama. And... Mm -hmm. uh, we made another, like we made other Tama and the new collection will arrive soon. And we made also other collab with some people like Eric. Which, right. Uh, yeah. I have a small secret for you. Like there will be like, uh, there will be a collab with Dao, which will release in the 25th of April with Native. And yeah. Okay, so guys, if you're tuning in today or on the podcast, set your calendars for just over a week from now on April 25th. That's on Sunday, I think, uh, next week, yep. Sunday. So there's going to be a collab coming out, guys. That's, ex that's exciting. Uh, which, how does the collab work on this one? Can you leak some details for us? Are you guys making the Ken? Is he doing the Tama? No, okay. Uh, Secrets. Okay, just yeah, yeah. on a scale of 1 to 10, how excited are you? 15? 15 okay that's pretty yeah. excited tim yeah, yeah. It, like it's awesome to work with eric and to make some uh, european tama with like his paint which i love and yeah it's uh, all euro tama so for me it's like perfect and is this tama or is this kendama going to be available worldwide and who will we be able to buy it from will it be on the native store or on the dao store or both it, it will be on the kendama friend store which is oh, the native okay. store too and uh, but there will be not a lot of kendama, so you will have to be fast to cut them. But yeah, yeah, I see that with uh, native kendama as well. You guys are sold out of all of your kendamas on there right now. When are you guys doing a restock? Um, a lot of uh, restock and new collection will arrive in like two months, maybe, maybe earlier, maybe only one month. But yeah, a lot of new stuff arrive, and re I'm really excited to play with it and to show it to everyone who want to try native. Alexi is doing like really a great job with all the Tama design and all the design of the, of the brand. And yeah. Oh, okay. Kendama friends is speaking right now. There, yeah, Kendama friends is here with the details. April 25th, Dao and Native Reads. Very short batch, guys. So make sure you set your calendars for that. That's super exciting. Oh, make sure that's in the show notes as well so people know that that's coming out and, and that they should get prepped for that. That's exciting. I'll have to be setting my alarm. I might need to finally cop myself both a Dao and a Native at the same time. You know, it, it's the best of both worlds coming together. I've been wanting to get some European kendamas in my hands. So we're going to make that happen, hopefully, this go around. Okay, let, let's take a little break and then let's jump in afterwards after we go through some questions here from the, the chat. And then we'll dive into your story with uh, Francis Got Talent. And then we'll, we'll talk a little bit about stay on your tablet. Because those two stories are kind of connected. That whole phrasing of stay on your tablet and the fact that you chose that is probably the, the most fascinating thing I think I've seen all year long. Like the amount of spite that you used there to just say like, no, 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 no. Let's make this incredible edit. Show them that Kendama is this rad, cool game. 
but no, you probably don't want to play it. Just go stay on your tablet. <laughs> I think what you guys did there was amazing and I can't wait to dive into that. But let's take a brief time to answer some questions from our viewers today. Uh, we got one from our Patreon subscriber. If you guys want to subscribe and support the show, you can do so by subscribing to the Patreon for $5 a month. That gives you behind the scenes access. You guys get to know who the guests are before anybody else does and so much more. You can head over to the Patreon in the link in bio and help support the show and, and keep, keep me caffeinated. That's really what it's all about is getting more coffee in me so that I can keep these things rolling. Um, Brett Walters wants to know, what is your philosophy when it comes to filming Kendama? Um, having fun. I just try to, when I know the Kendama chicks will be long to film, I really try to be sure that I want to try at it like for hours. And when I find it, I just like, okay, let's go. Let's just put the camera and I just do my tricks and it's cool. Yeah, I don't think if I have really a real philosophy when I'm filming, I'm just like, it's on the moment. I'm like, yeah, let's film a trick. And I want to do that and that. You, do you film a lot of your own tricks? Because I, a lot of the tricks that I've seen are, are look like someone else has filmed it for you, like Alex. Does Alex do a yeah, lot of your filming? Yeah, yeah. Since I worked with uh, Alex, like uh, uh, we start uh, doing some video together two years ago. We made our one of my first edit, like big edit, which called Bibuzoavri, and we really love like making video together. Mm -hmm. And after he went to like my flat last year, and he became my roommate. So like we're doing a lot of video together. And now that I have the habit to be filmed with like. This guy, which is like incredible at what he does, it's I just like less film alone because I'm just like, okay, maybe I should wait. Alex is ready and I will film this trick better. <laughs> yeah, so you don't do much filming yourself anymore. You kind of wait for him. Because yeah. cause I don't ever see a bad clip from you. I've never, I don't think in the past, like I don't even know how long that I've ever seen a clip where you just like leaned up your phone against the concrete wall or something and then just recorded yourself like that. Like that, you don't find that on Tim's feed anywhere. All you see is like highly edited, really crisp shots of someone going up and down with them. Like how, how okay, a Alex is really good uh, at filming. He's very, very good at filming and editing. How, how long do you put into each trick or clip? Like, is it quick or does it take you a long time? It really depends. And uh, we have something funny with Alex. I uh, like one tricks out of three, I always land it before when he set up the camera. So when he set up, I laced it. And so I don't have on record. And it took me after like one hour sometimes to just film it. But yeah, now he know me. So he know like I can take a lot of time to film. Yeah. Like all my around. Sometimes I'm just like, oh yeah, in 10 minutes I, I can do it. And one hour and a half after I'm just like. <laughs> and he's with me and I can I don't know sometimes I'm just fast but I think I'm really uh, I really need some time to film tricks because yeah, yeah. the camera strikes me a little bit even if I have the habit I'm like okay now I have to do it and I just do shit during 10 minutes and after I'm good <laughs> yeah well, a lot of respect and a lot of love goes out to the Kanama filmers in the community like Alex. You guys put on for the game more than people will ever know. And so many people don't even know who's actually making the clips look so good. It's like, you know, we're just playing the game. You and I, we're having fun. And it's other guys that are coming and filming us and saying like, oh, let's make this look good. You know, they make us the players that we are, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's okay. really Inspirational to see how Alex like make the Kendama friends video now for the product because I live now in the stock. So I'm not really excited with the new release and stuff because it's daily life for me. But when I saw the film he's doing with the Kendama behind me, I'm like, okay, I want to buy one right now. It's really cool. Yeah. And he's doing some like creative stuff and yeah, it's oh. really cool. It's so cool. It's so cool. Okay. Let's, let's talk about, uh, Francis got talent here in a, in a second. Hold on. Uh, there actually is a couple more questions here. I totally forgot that we were still doing this Q&A period. So let's jump back into this. Okay, we got a question here from Theodore Fiorna, or I never know how to pronounce his last name. Can you tell me? How Turner, you Turner. Turner, <laughs> Turner, Turner is perfect. You have to Turner, call him like that. Turner, 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 Turner. Furniture can. <laughs> <laughs> Tio wants to know, uh, what's your worst event travel send? 
Yeah, I know what he's talking about. Um, so when I, I went to EKC two years ago in Copenhagen and to return to Lyon, I fucked up with my plane, but I didn't know. So I took a bus from Copenhagen to Hamburg. And when I arrived in Hamburg, I went to some homie and uh, I was uh, uh, normally my plane was at six o'clock and uh, it wasn't they canceled my flight because i didn't take the way so that i didn't have flight so i end up doing copenhagen <laughs> to lyon uh, by bus okay and it was like 33 hours of bus and i wasn't 33 really like 33 three? yeah and i was alone and i really felt older when i end this trip but it was really funny i just went from Hamburg to Amsterdam, Amsterdam to Paris, and Paris to Lyon. And yeah, I just play Kendama at the break and watch Netflix in the bus. And I was like, okay, it's just my natural habitat for one day. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Did you film uh, lots of tricks when you were on that trip? Like make an edit out of it or something like that? No, not really. I, I was only having my phone with me. Okay. And uh, so, yeah, I just filmed some story and some around Tunbridge Wells and yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's, that's a pretty cool story. And I feel like that's a, a nice, like coming day, coming of age story. You know, I missed my flight and I had to take a 33 hour trip on a, on a bus alone. And, you know, you're discovering yourself. You're going through this old <laughs> journey. That's, that's cool. And is, there's obviously like a lot of trains and buses and stuff in Europe. We don't have that a whole lot in Canada or in the States, really. It's a very European thing to go on a long bus ride or on trains and stuff. Is that pretty common to travel to events through bus or train? Do people do that a lot? Uh, more and more people are doing it. But like first, I was really taking the plane a lot. And at one point, I just react that it was not like a good habit to have just for the environment and all this stuff. For, so I decided to try to only take bus to go to events. And since the 33 hours, I was just like, okay, it's chill. Only 15 hours, okay, cool. I yeah. can do it easy. And so, yeah, it's really common now to just take the bus for me and the train. But the German people, and yeah, in France, we are, we are taking the plane a lot, I think. But uh, we should take more the train and bus. Yeah, man, if I come out to Europe, I'm for sure taking a train trip. That's like on my bucket list of things to do is to, to ride a train in, in Europe across yeah, the country. You can somewhere. take a train from Canada to France. Like, you can do that, I think. From Canada to France? <laughs> over, over the ocean? That would be pretty cool. <laughs> I might, I might, we might not make it. <laughs> well, <let's see. laughs> okay, um, uh, Peko, P E C K O U wants to know what are things you didn't prepare for when starting a Kendama company? Uh, I wasn't prepared at all, like for anything because I was like going out of physics study. So it was just like discovering for me. So I was like, okay, you have to do that. You have to do that. Okay, let's go. I need to like learn some new stuff and be good at this stuff, which is really different from what I'm doing since these three years. And yeah. I wasn't prepared. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. I'll, I'll ask, this is a blunt question, future question, but you guys have Kendama France and you have Native Kendama. If Native Kendama blows up and becomes really big and it grows and scales, would you guys keep doing Kendama France or would you put everything towards Native Kendama? Uh, I can't speak for the future, but I think we will continue Kendama France because it's really like giving everyone all the kendama as they want and giving like accessibility to it so it was really i i think we will continue for sure just to like for the community yeah. even if it, it's there. yeah and to, to clarify someone someone in the chat uh t, I, I don't know how to pronounce names from ig but uh, t-h-o-p-l-a-r-d uh, thought blurred uh, asked did did kendama, did tim start the kendama company uh though uh, you weren't the one who started the brand right yeah, yeah. Toplar is the guy who show me Kendama. He's my friend and he's part of the Kendama friends. Like he's also like an associate. So he, we, he knows the answer of this question for sure. But yeah, I didn't start the company, Thomas. Yeah. So you didn't start it, um, but you were, you were kind of early on and then help, you've helped build the company to where it's at. So, okay. Uh, 
the same person asked another question, wanted to know, uh, give us your top five French Kendama players. Who are your favorite five French players? Oh, wow. My five, oh, like level wise or just? That, you can interpret that however you want. If you just want to say your favorite five people to play with, you can say that. If you think in terms of skill level, who are the top five, you choose how to answer that. That's up to you. Okay, there will be no order in my, what I say. Uh, okay, I, I can say Theodore, but Theodore is not a real French, so he won't, he won't count in the in this top five. Like there is Toplar for sure, uh, Karad, which is Louis, who I start Kendama with. Uh, I really enjoy playing with Ben, mm -hmm. which is here, who is here. Uh, two more people, there is so much people. I, you know, I really like Playing bon, with, uh, bonjour, bonjour, bonjour. I, I speak French. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Adam is one of my favorite people. Yes! <laughs> okay, one more, one more. Did I say four or three? Well, if you count me. <laughs> ah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and I really like playing with, um, with uh, Alex. Alex, okay. Awesome. Yeah, you got to have a filmer in your favorite five. You got to show some love to Alex for sure. Cool. Okay. We got a couple more questions here in the chat. We'll try and blitz through a couple of them, but uh, there's a, a couple fun ones here from Adrian Esteban. Here's one. Adrian wants to know, if you were to design a shape, how would it play? If you could build your own Kanama, what, how would you design it? Um, like a Kanama? <laughs> I don't know. Um... It's been such a long time that I'm playing the dead shape that for me it's just like Kendama is Kendama and I really never thought about like making a shape. I think I will really like give attention to the handle stall and of the rotation of the can, but yeah, I don't know. <laughs> is handle stall your favorite trick? Yeah, kind of. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. I'm doing it like a lot and I can like just define myself like I, I can just like give myself like okay do a, a round handle stall right now and I'm just having a lot of fans and I'm doing that since two years or three and it just still really really fun for me just doing a round handle stall. Yeah, it's a hard trick and it's one that I mean a lot of people don't practice handle stall all that much or at least learn to put it to the handle from any position possible right and and you've obviously gotten very very good at that and and you like playing more of a controlled stall based game rather than like a quick you know tap 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 juggle and hope you get it on the spike you you like playing very controlled yeah from, i really love like, i really love the consistency of the game like mm -hmm. all the around like my brain love all the around and that's why i'm doing around turn bridge wells because it's something that push you a lot, like the pressure when you are at the last tricks you want to make in the round turn rituals and you just like feel empty <laughs> and you're scared and <laughs> well, goes through your head and it's really fun. Yeah, have but you ever yeah, tried? I, I, I oh, sorry, go ahead. And, uh, but now that I did like a lot of around stall, I really love all the Insta Lighthouse too, like which is for me like completely different and it's a uh, brand new, uh, skills to learn in my Kandama skill. So it's cool too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you, have you ever done a round around 10 bridge walls? Uh, I have a project for this one. Okay. Like, uh, I want to go to the city 10 bridge walls and uh, do it like in front of the sign of the city 10 bridge walls, like doing like a round around 10 bridge walls in front of the sign 10 bridge walls with wow. some other goodies that I find in the city. So is yeah. Well, is Tunbridge Wells close to where you live? No, it's in England. Oh, <laughs> I, don't, but, I don't know European geography, man. Get off my back. <laughs> yeah, how, far, <laughs> how, how far is uh, Tunbridge Wells from Lyon? I don't know, but it's really far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Yeah, okay. The weekend for sure, but good trip to do. Yeah. Okay. So Ben Conte has a question. This is a good question. Uh, what would you do if you didn't do Kendama? Let's say Kendama was taken away from you. You could never play it again. It became illegal. You, you weren't allowed to play it. You couldn't touch it anymore. What would you play? What would you do? Oh, fuck. I hate him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know. Maybe I will be like in a farm doing some like vegetables and learn some stuff like that. I really <laughs> no, think you I wouldn't. Come on. 
and mm-hmm. and learn how to build a house and <laughs> work with my hand. I think I would do that. You, you okay? So you farmer, farmer Tim. Okay. I, I don't know. I want to learn. I don't know shit about it, but I think <laughs> I would try to do that. Are would you consider yourself a pretty healthy guy? Like, do you do you like cooking? Do you, do you grow any vegetables or anything like that already? Uh, I'm kind of vegetarian. Okay. Like sometimes I just eat meat, but I try to really like eat vegetables a lot. And before COVID, I was like, I was healthy guy. I was going to the climb room, climbing room, like every two days. And uh, but since all the lockdown situation, all, all this stuff, I lost a little bit my life reason but it's quite cool <laughs> oh absolutely that's cool yeah i i'm not a vegetarian but i i chat with chad all the time from soul Kanamas, and every time i talk to him I'm like ah chad's a pretty cool guy maybe i should go vegan be like chad <laughs> you know maybe i could grow my hair out be more like chad <laughs> <laughs> okay a uh, long time listener of the show and supporter uh dylan pats d pats underscore 48 wants to know is there anywhere that he can go back and watch the francis got talent performance and then you know right after this question let's talk about francis got talent uh you can watch the part on stay on your tablet you can see it because we just put it everything like uh, we can't even us didn't saw all the our prestation because they cut it at the at the production yeah yeah and what a disappointment those guys don't even know what they're talking about a bunch of fools <laughs> but no no seriously they're, they're good, good people but okay let, let's talk about francis got talent for those for those of the people listening and tuning in that didn't listen to the to episode that are behind on their kanama news and missed this uh what what happened? Tell us about this whole Francis Got Talent thing. What is it? What happened? Okay, so it was at the end of the first lockdown here in France. It was a Monday and I was drinking beer with a friend and we were just chilling, like like kind of partying for the end of the lockdown. And I just received a call and it was just, hey, we're Friends Got Talent. Do you want to participate? Can you send us a video? And I was like, okay, is this true? Okay, let's go, let's do it. And I just contacted Tio and we made the video that is uh, on Stay On Your Tablet. And uh, they accept us. So we were like, okay, let's do it. And uh, we, uh, we trained like three or four times. Like Tio went to France for weeks, for one week or two weeks. And I went to his uh, friend's, French house. And uh, uh, where am I? Yeah, and we just went to Paris. Uh, there was just like a problem at the first uh, date we were supposed to film. Like one of the judge has the COVID. So it just mm-hmm. uh, delay everything. And uh, so we were at the Dow opening one day before the friends got talent. So it was really like... Uh, short schedule but it was really yeah we just like left austria separate with you and meet the night at paris and yeah we full send there That's cool. and for for the days we just like it was for me like a kendama event i just show kendama to every people in the production all the artists we met it was really it was really a good day to just discover all this world which is TV, and I didn't know for sure about it. And uh, yeah, our show starts, and we missed some spike, but not a lot. Like we almost did all the pre- all the prestation we wanted to do, and uh, we had a problem with the music at the end, and there was some stuff going on. And after the judge, as you see in the in the stay on your tablet, tell us some bad things. A little bit like mm-hmm. some yeah it was really weird to hear people like that say this to us but they mm-hmm. remark some good stuff too like that good remarks like uh, it's not like a show for tv and it was our purpose to uh with Tio to just show kendama how it is we didn't mm-hmm. want to adapt kendama for tv but we wanted people to see what kendama is for us like we just play together. We can do like some synchro, but it's really not the purpose of it for us. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I remember chatting with Tio about it and, and he talks about it 
in, in a way, like, like you, what you were saying is you weren't trying to change Kendama to fit TV because if you wanted to, you could have put together this really fun aesthetic flow line, something that was like a dance style routine, something that you would see a guy like Eiji uh, from Chrome Kendama do, you know, like a very like, you know, performance based Kendama, but you guys went out there and you showed them what Kendama you know, normally is, and you gave them a real picture of what it was. And, and, you know, they weren't into it. It wasn't, it wasn't quote unquote entertainment. You know, it wasn't something that people would pay to watch, but that's not actually the point of Kendama. You don't want to watch people play Kendama. You want to play Kendama and you want to show people that they want to play it as well. And, and I think you guys did that well, right? I, I remember watching it and I'm, I'm a, I'm butthurt for you guys that they stopped it early and that they, you know, they told you, you know, I what would the guy said something along the lines of like I'd rather my kid stay on his tablet than play this game and I was like yeah. you would rather your kid waste his life away on his tablet playing video games that won't lead anywhere than doing something outdoors physical meeting new people engaging in a highly intense game like what what's wrong with you man I'm worried for your kid <laughs> And before before the show we talked about the bad remarks that the judges can do with Tio and I think between Tio and me, I'm, I am the calm one. And I was like, okay, Tio, if they say some shitty stuff, don't worry, I will talk with them. Don't try to get angry. And uh, when the guy makes the remark of stay on your tablet, I went crazy in my head. And I just like went behind, crossed my arm and just like saying nothing. I, I just say nothing because I was <laughs> like, how can you say that? What, what, what did you want to say? If you could, if I'm the judge, I've just said this to you. This is your second chance. What do you want to say to me? I've just told you that I would rather my children stay on their tablet instead of play this game. What would you want to tell me? Are you stupid or what? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, we know that screens are bad for everyone and also for kids. And Kendama is like wood toys you can meet people with you can travel with and you can do all of this stuff which is really cool for you and for your mind and for your body and you you will stay on your tablet like oh, oh. <laughs> yeah you you totally blew the judge over right there he fell backwards <laughs> That, man, yeah, absolutely. I thought that was the most peculiar thing that someone could ever say when watching Kendama. And I, I asked myself, like, how could anyone be that, you know, stone cold to, to say that and to not see what just happened in front of them and go, no, that looks like something I'd want my kid to do. Maybe he's just, maybe, maybe his kid isn't very coordinated and he just feels bad. And his kid maybe had a bad experience with Kendama. He wasn't very good at it. And so he's got this back, back story of, of he, maybe he tried to play Kendama once and it didn't go well for him. And now he's just bitter. <laughs> we, uh, they didn't show it in the, in the TV, but when we arrived before our show, we just like show them some uh, Kendama and give them some native crown and some GT and they played with us. They do, they did like a big cup and a spike and uh, that they understand the toy. And maybe he, like, I don't know, he misspiked it and he was angry about that. Yeah. Oh man. I, regardless though, I think it was one of the coolest things that happened in all of 2020 for Kendama. And the fact that you and Tio got to do that, standalone is one of the most impactful things that's happened in Kendama. The fact that you guys were able to go and perform the game that all of us, you know, in our bedrooms or in these small communities get to play. We finally had something like big to cheer for and go like, look at this, this is amazing. And, and I think we all felt this like childish joy to see the game that we love and play on national television. I think that was so cool. And, and I think you should be proud of it nonetheless. And I know Tio is, and I know you are, even if it didn't go the way you hoped it would have, uh, I think it was still an incredible and monumental uh, moment in Kanama history. And, and I don't think it's out of question that it could happen again. I think it might happen again. And I think it probably will happen again at some point, whether or not it's you or at a different Got Talent or whatever it is. I don't think we're done seeing Kanama on national television is all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. And I'm really angry with that. Like, and it was like a choice for us to show Kendama how it is, but I think Kendama can fit the TV. And Chrome made a good uh, run in the Denmark Got Talent, and I was really impressed with their show with uh, all the Kendama with uh, some lights in it. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, I, I forgot think... they did that. I need to go find that video and rewatch that. Uh, yeah. I think it's on YouTube somewhere, isn't it? You can find it easily on YouTube. Yeah. And it's with 
Philip Eldridge and Ben Mastek. So it's really funny to see all the show and all the Chrome stems, the Chrome classic tricks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Oh, those guys are cool. Do you guys, so with uh, Kenoma France and Native, obviously Chrome is kind of the big European Kenoma company. Do you guys do much work with them? Are you, are you guys close with them as Kenoma France? Do you guys retail Chrome Kenoma as well? Yeah, yeah, we retail them a lot. Like it's it's one of our uh, like we were we are customer of Chrome and we have like a long relationship with him with with us and uh, I also know personally a lot of uh, Chrome guy who work there and uh, yeah it's really cool to work with them and to develop Kendama with them and yeah. uh, that's cool. Man, that's so cool. I can't wait to see more live television, more big events and stuff like that. I think those things are the things that are going to keep growing Kanama. Because you got to think about it. It's like you, that, that segment of your show has now been seen by millions of people, right? So many people have seen that. How many people do you think saw that and said, I want to try that? I don't care what that judge said. I want to play that and try that. There's so many people out there that probably would have just picked it up after that and said, huh, or someone who used to play and saw that and picked it up and started playing again. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, and, and I think a lot of people discover the toy and just say, oh, okay, it exists. And uh, now, like, more and more, you see more and more Kendama on YouTube, on Instagram, and Kendama is kind of, uh, like, going crazy in France right now. Like, more and mm -hmm. more people are playing with all the lockdown. It was the perfect toy to play with. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. I it's, think it was growing really, fast. It was really a good opportunity to uh, yeah, show to people what Kendama is. Yeah, I hundred percent agree. Okay, uh, let, let's talk a little bit about stay on your tablet. So you guys did this big event, Francis Got Talent, and then afterwards, just recently, you guys released this amazing edit, this movie called Stay on Your Tablet. Um, when did you start filming that? What was? How did that come to life? Tell me about that movie because I think it's the. Personally, in my opinion, it's my favorite favorite video that's come out in the past year. Personally, I'm not saying uh, you know any everybody's gonna have their opinion, but I think it was the most moving video that I watched all year. Thanks a lot. And uh, so yeah, it was quite random at the first, uh, at the, like at the beginning of the project. Uh, we just uh, filmed Bibouzoavri, which was my edit I took earlier, like the summer of uh, 2019. And I just uh, like uh, went to Christmas to Alex's place because he was not living at my flat at this time. And he was uh, in the ski station. Like he was working there. And uh, he just looked at me and say, okay, Tim, let's do a documentary now. And I was like, okay, let's go. And we just filmed the first rush in the, in the Stay on Your Tablet film when I just fell on the big PVC, uh, you know, the rail. Yeah. Um, it was just like, it started like that. And after he went to my flat and he went to event with me and we were like, okay, let's go. It will be in, in our film, in our documentary. And there were... Like all the opportunity we have with Friends Got Talent, with all the Kendama events, and he had some good video, and yeah, he just full send it. And yeah. he made hell of a work with all this documentary, and it was so long, and he put so much time, and it's so crazy to watch now. All the idea of calling it Stay on Your Tablet, and all the funny stuff in it is really from him. Yeah, you guys filmed that over the course of a long time. Like there, it spans what one year or two years worth of footage. Uh, one year, one year of footage. One year worth of footage, man. I have such a, a like instant gratification mind that if I film something, I want to put it up that same day. To hold on to footage for a year and to then put it into something is crazy. I think that's so cool and and wonderful, and it turned out amazing. Like the video is really cool. You you go through a bunch of different phases. Talk talk to me a little bit about the series of events that are in the, the video in the movie. Um, from the beginning, like in the beginning, I think it opens with a quick little interview. You know, it introduces you. Hi, this is Tim. You know, Tim Tim's a you know native kind I don't I, or native Kanama, Blah blah blah. Tim likes to sleep a lot. You know, like it it gives you this like introduction to who you are, which I think no other Kanama edit or video has really done that in the same way where. 
I actually felt like I was watching your story. Like I was getting to know you as more than just a guy who plays Kanama, but really getting to know you. And then, and then the whole film drops once, once you and Ben hit that doubles trick where he does the flip, the bass drop comes in the moment, the momentum of the whole film picks up at that point. And it's just like, that's how they opened it. And it was so freaking cool. I loved it. So tell me about the series of events that go on in it. Uh, what were some of the highlights, challenges? What all went into filming that? Okay, I, I just have to take my USB plug because my phone is dying for no reason and I just <laughs> arrived in one minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, while he goes away, guys, let's take a moment to thank our sponsor, Nobody. You know that this show isn't sponsored. We're trying. We want to get sponsored by one of my favorite canola, or one of my favorite coffee brands this year. We're looking at trying to secure the secure the bag of beans that's the hope for the year so guys if you want to see one of your favorite roasters featured on here comment them tag them at them you do whatever you need to make happen tell them that this show is worth sponsoring with their coffee <laughs> just kidding guys we don't have any sponsors <laughs> right on right on right on we'll, we'll let them get this plugged in let me check if there's a question here that we should ask while he comes back real quick uh yeah we'll ask your question here in a second nico I, I like that question that's a good question to ask okay so yeah tell tell us about the video tell us about the movie and kind of the sequence that goes on in it okay so all uh, the events we made like uh we start with uh, yeah we we start with uh, we, uh we went to paris to visit mm -hmm. ben because we had like a problem with the bus to go to germany and uh, it was quite random to went there and it was awesome. So I met Ben like only one time before this part and he just like uh, get us on the roof of Paris and it was mind blowing to just be here. And it was so, I don't know, it's, oh, it was so scary at the first. <laughs> we were like playing in Bama on the roof and I, we were with Alex and Oscar and we were filming and yeah, and Ben was so chill and doing his stuff, like just yeah. going on the roof and waving us like with one hand, and we were like, "Wow, <laughs> I can't did, even walk." How, how did you? Yeah, how did you meet Ben in the first place? Like, how did that relationship happen? Because you guys are good, good friends now. Yeah, yeah, we're really good friends now, and uh, but I'm just doing it because he's famous. So I don't like him at all. But <laughs> <laughs> did you hear that, Ben? He doesn't, he just wants you for your clout. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, at the first uh, lockdown, <laughs> at the first lockdown, uh, I made like some, uh, some dare for people and Ben was doing it. And I just talked to him a little bit. And uh, at one point he made a video to explain Kendama. And it was like I had the idea to make tutorials since three years, but I didn't want to do myself because I didn't have the idea and how to talk about people. So I was just waiting for, for the man. And I just saw the video where Ben was talking about Kendama, explaining to like rookie. And I was like, okay, we need this guy because I really love how he explained the game. He really understand it and it would be cool to have him. So we just call each other. And he was on the roof and doing his stuff and we were cool and we, I just sent <laughs> him at the phone and we feel really comfortable. And then he went at, he made the video for us, the first tutorial, which is really good now. And, uh, and yeah, after he went to uh, an event, we organized a summer, he went to my place, he discovered all the Kendama friends team. And uh, the guy who has, uh, which, uh, Thomas and Louis, uh, I started Kendama with them, like Ben was in Paris, like Ben. So he met my friends, he met everyone and he became friends with everyone. And now he's just part of the crew. Yeah. Yeah. And, and obviously he fits in so well. Like we had him on the show a couple months back now. Uh, I love Ben. He's one of my new favorite players in the community. I think he's got such a humble attitude and just genuine love for the game and the people. And obviously like he has, you know, clout and support and he just brings something to the game uh, in terms of a style and like a, an attitude that I love. I love his like performance, 
his ability to incorporate parkour or free running into Kanama and see that skill enhance that ability and to bring it into a new community. Like he's such a great fit. Look at, look at this guy. We love this guy. There's he's much best. love about me, so I need to give some love back. <laughs> hey, well, we, we'll, we'll have to get Ben back on here. We might do, have to do a, an episode where we get a bunch of the Euro squad on. We'll do a, a Euro squad episode. Yeah, 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 for sure. But okay, so okay, so you met Ben. You filmed the sequences, the er, opening sequences with him in Paris. Uh, yeah. What what happened after that? After like it was just one day, and uh, it was like my birthday, so it was fun, and we just oh. went to Germany. We sent it to Germany, and uh, we went to Munster. There was a Munster Dance Bike Tournament, and it was the second edition. The first edition was one of my. It was my third event, I think. I will, I ran back in the days. I ran the car of my. I take the. I took the car of my parents, and I just drove like with two friends, fifteen hours to go to the monster uh, monster dance bike tournament, the first one. And mm -hmm. so we went to the second one, and yeah, we were just like, it was life beginning again. Like it was the first Kendama event we went since the COVID, and it was really satisfying to see all the German friends and just breaking down man, with everyone. Like, it was really cool. And all the competition, like, went really cool. I finished uh, on the final with Semi, and he beat me up, and he was really yeah. strong <laughs> at this one. And, yeah. And Have after, you, we back to do friends. You, <laughs> yeah. Do you like competing? You've obviously been to a lot a lot of competitions. Do you enjoy the competition side of Kendama? Yeah, I really love competing. It's, like, push me for the open, like, for learning new tricks. And it's real, I really love all the process to like train a trick list more than participate, I think. Like mm -hmm. it's really cool to discover it and you're like, okay, I will never learn this trick in three tries. And if you try it enough, like two weeks after you're like, okay, let's go. I can do that. And you just, I, I learned so many tricks with open trick list, like really. And uh, yeah. I really love the freestyle too, like the pressure and how you react in this kind of situation, just your brain is empty and you just yeah. do stuff. And it's really like interesting for yeah. me for understand how I work and how Kandama works. And yeah, I really love competition. Yeah. And you guys have a pretty fortunate out in Europe too, because you guys have so many events, like there's always events happening. And so, so much opportunity to compete. I'm, I'm so jealous. I like in Canada until we started hosting brew battle, there was van jam and that was it. And aside from that, I would have to drive to the States to go to <laughs> MKO or NAKO. And, and I had only ever been to that. It was closer for me to go to NAKO than it was for me to go to van jam in Vancouver. <laughs> it was, I was like, ah, it, it was just so hard to compete. And I feel like I missed out on that. Part of the reason I'm really jealous of the European scene is just the amount of how everything's so close together. You can just travel 30 minutes, an hour, two hours, and be at another group of Kanama players. And it's cool. It, it's just something I, I think that a lot of us really crave from out here in like Canada or even in the States in some locations where there just isn't as much you know, connection. It's like stuff spreads in, in Europe really fast. Yeah, you really have to come to Europe. I no. think you want to come. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I, I, I'm trying to convince Kanama France to buy me a flight. Uh, you put in oh, a good yeah, word. <laughs> they will buy you for sure. Buy one. For sure. <laughs> yes. We're coming. All right. Uh, so, okay. So you filmed all this stuff. Uh, what else was in the video? What, were, what was your favorite part of the documentary for you? Uh, the favorite part for me is really... Uh, like the favorite part of the video, the most funny one for me, and for, so the, my favorite one is when uh, I'm at the Dow freestyle and I win against Sammy and uh, Alex put some uh, World Football Cup video on it and it made me like, for, laugh for one week, I think. I was <laughs> watching it every day and I was like, okay, that's too fun, too much fun for me right there. And uh, I... I really love also the end of the of the documentary when like I really love the idea Alex come to me like okay now you're gonna watch the tablet and you will be around Tunbridge Wells on the tablet and I was like okay it's the best idea we can have and I really love this part too. Yeah 
Hey, and at the end of the day, you know, you have to ask yourself the question. When you watch your video, I think that the video leaves you asking a question. Would you rather stay on your tablet watching this video or do you want to pick up a condom and play? And, and I think <laughs> anyone who really takes the time to watch the video is going to say, no, I think I want to buy one of these condomas and play. And, and, and you did that so well. I, I grew up playing kendama probably about as long as you've been playing. I've been playing for about six years, five, six years ish now. I'm nowhere near as good as you, but I grew up watching all of the vlogs and the videos and the documentaries from all the events that, you know, the Kusa team or the sweets team would travel to. And I just remember growing up watching those and being like, I just want to be there. I want to do what they're doing and experience it. And I had that exact same feeling when I watched stay on your tablet. I just watched that and said, I want to be where those people are because they're having more fun than anyone else that I can ever see. And you guys captured that so perfectly, so beautifully. And I just, I think, I think it's the greatest video that came out all year and it probably will be for quite some time. So con congrats. You've won me over. I'm coming to Europe. Thanks a lot. Like it was really our purpose to just show what's our life in the Kendama community in Europe. Like mm -hmm. the, yeah, it was not the idea to just show my life and stuff like that. We will, we really want to show like all the event and all the vibes. And if people want to know what is Kendama event and what is the Kendama life kind of, they have like a good example with this film. And we are really, really happy how it came, how it came, how it came. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah how it came out yeah you guys you guys are killing it um big props to kendama france there's no other like there's maybe one or two other like dis resellers or distributors out there in the world that are doing some like big stuff you know i think of kendama depot in the u.s like mjr he's rocking it there you're you, you guys are killing it but other than that like there's maybe a couple other smaller ones like myself that are doing some cool stuff and you know the sweets kendama's branches but but you guys have done something totally different you've gone above and beyond what it looks like to be a reseller for a company you guys have made advertising materials you guys have made epic videos you guys have turned it into a business rather than a hobby and i just want to applaud you guys for that you guys have put so much work into growing Kendama without even having your own brand originally. You were just doing it because you love the game so much and you're reselling Kendamas, just trying to get them into more people's hands, just hustling it. I think that's so rad. And honestly, more people need to do that. You don't need to build your own Kendama company to be able to impact Kendama. Work with other brands to do it. There's so many opportunities and you guys have shown that that's possible and to still be able to make a name for yourself because the Kendama France team is huge. Like you guys have killed it. Absolutely rock it. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know what to. I don't know what to say. You just say but, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, well, all, hey. like, all this work was possible thanks the Kendama community for me. Like because we have homie and they all talk about Kendama, so they develop Kendama in their way, and they just say, "Oh, you can go to Kendama friends," and people just send us message and. It's really satisfying to work for all of this. And uh, thanks to them now, we were going to have like some, uh, you know, uh, local. Like it's the last, I think this is the last video where I will be here with all the stuff in my flat. And like soon I, we will have like a, not a shop, but like some place to like a warehouse. And uh, it's on thanks to Kendama community, like really. So thank you guys. And um, yeah, <laughs> if, it, if it's anything for you listening, if you're listening via Spotify, Apple, wherever you're tuning into this live, you name it. If you're sitting there thinking to yourself like, hey, I want to make Kanama a part of my life bigger than it is. You don't have to be a pro player. You don't have to own a company. You just have to love the game and be willing to take a risk. You know, put some time, energy, effort in, maybe put a couple dollars in, connect with the company you love. Ask yourself the question, how can I impact my local community? And you can make something happen. I, I've made, you know, I've made things happen with Kanama. I, I didn't used to be very well known. You know, Tim was just a Kanama player once upon a time. I think all of us, we're all just people who love the game and we've just made decisions to make this a part of our life, to grow it. And so for you, if you're listening to this and you're, you're hearing this and you're like, okay, this isn't me. I think it is, you know, we all have that possibility, that opportunity to do something. And I think you just got to go do it. Yeah, what I really love in the Kendama is when you start, you want to develop this toy because it brings you so much joy, so much uh, concentration and so much good stuff in your life and understanding. So you just want to develop it. And if it became your job, it's cool. But I mean, 
just, just love if it. You want to play and you love it, just develop it and it's really cool for you. And yeah. Yeah, always improving every day, both the game and yourself. I think Kendama challenges us, challenges us in so many ways. Yeah. Hey, well, Tim, we are getting close to just over an hour and a half here. Let me see if there's a couple questions left and then, and then we'll, we'll put a little bow on this. We'll wrap this up. Uh, I want to know briefly uh, what your future plans are. I think we always like to kind of leave with a little bit of a, a hint at to where Tim's going, where a guest hopes to be in the next couple of years. So we'll ask that question and then we'll, we'll check a couple more viewer questions here. So if you have questions for those of you tuning in live, drop those in there. Um, but I want to know from, from you, uh, Tim, you know, where do you want to be in two years with Kanama? What, what's next for you? <laughs> uh, that's a hard question because living Kendama friend's life is like, I feel like each week is different and each week we're getting bigger. We have new idea and we have like new like idea for the future and we see the future differently. Mm -hmm. Um how I can see you in two years. Do you want to have your own pro mod? I, I know that question came up a little bit. It yeah, if I have a pro mod it will be like I will be really happy to just do the Kendama with my name on it and to like design it. It's still like quite a dream for me but uh i don't know maybe like i would like that everyone who has to know kendama know kendama like all the people who search something a skill toy and just like are born for kendama have a kendama it would be my purpose in two years i hope like everyone has one the whole <laughs> world Tim, Tim yeah. wants to see the whole world have a kendama in every room in a house. That's and Tim's. more events and yeah, just like a big community and try to still have this uh, mindset in the community. Like, yeah. because like what is really beautiful with kendama, I think it's that there is not a lot of money involved in the event. So everyone is really here for the love and the toy and for playing with everyone, for meeting new people. And I really want to like continue with this mindset. Mm -hmm. Dude, well, you're doing it. You're killing it. I love it. And I want to see more of it. Uh, we want to see more of the French fireball, Mr. <laughs> Tim, uh, pushing the Kendama love out there. You are on it. You're pushing it. And we're just grateful for you. So Tim, uh, let's, let's wrap it up here with one question from the viewer. And then I always like to leave the last couple words with you and then I'll, I'll promo kind of what's coming up next. But uh, Nico, uh, Nico E underscore YY wants to know, what do you think about the European Kanama scene compared to other communities around the world? If you could give us a snapshot of what the European Kanama community is in your eyes and why it's better than everywhere else in the world, tell us. Uh, I mean, I don't know the other community, so it's hard to compare, but for me, the European Kendama community is really just love. We just like, it's so fucked up how I'm close to people that I met with this toy. Like, it's, yeah. I'm always impressed, like, oh, wow, is it just, is it were just guy who's playing the same toy as me and now they are real friend and I want to spend time with them. I go visit them. They visit me in my flat and we just, yeah, we don't, we won't know each other if there is not, if there isn't Kendama and yeah, the yeah, Kendama, the European Kendama community is so, so cool and I really love to be part of it. Awesome. Hey, well, I'm coming. I've said this like 30 times this episode. I'm coming to Europe. I swear I'm going to be there someday. I want to be there. I want to come sesh with you guys and, and hang out. So, uh, Tim, uh, you know, thank you so much for jumping on here. Thank you for all you've done. I've said a lot of things, so I'll keep this short um, and, and ask, you know, if you could give one closing word or closing remarks to the community, something that you think that the Kenoma community needs to hear, uh, what would you want to say to them uh, as we close off this episode? Um, um, I think it's a classic thing to say because everyone tell it, but I really need to, t I really need to tell it too. Like we have to remember that it's a toy and we have to have fun with it. And it's like the basic things. Like we just need to have fun and play with it. And yeah, just, just have fun guys. And don't go too like, too deep in the reflection and what is Kendama and how you have to play it. If you have to play it this way or this way, just play it and yeah, do whatever you want and lay some tricks. <laughs> there you have it. 
And that is a wrap on this week's episode of The Review. Tim, thank you so much for coming on here. If you were listening to this, go check out Kanama France's website. Go check out Native Kanama. They got a fun new collab coming out on April 25th of 2021 with Da-O. If you don't know anything about Da-O, go watch last week's episode with Eric, the founder and owner of Da Origins Kendamas, and you can hear a little bit more about their story. And honestly, two episodes back to back leading into next week's episode. And just after that is the launch. It kind of worked out so perfectly. We didn't plan this at all, but you know, it's really nice to hear both sides of the story before a collab. And I'm so excited. I, I'm, there's a high possibility that I'm going to be putting in my first order for a European-made Kendama. I think this is so cool. So uh, thank you, Tim. Thank you, Kendama France. Thank you, Nativ. Thank you for pushing the game. And thanks for all you guys do. And we are so grateful. I want to say who is on next week's episode, but I need to double check. And I'm on my wrong computer because I'm not at my normal studio that I record this from. And so I actually don't remember who's on next week. So it's a secret for now. So if you want to know... <laughs> I'm going to tell people on Patreon who's up next. Uh, so go and subscribe to the Patreon for $5 a month. And I will let you guys know before the end of the weekend, before anyone else knows who's up next week. Anyways, guys, enjoy the rest of your week and stay caffeinated. Tim, thanks for being on here. Thank you for inviting me. See you Absolutely. soon. I hope. Soon. Get rid of COVID and I'm on my way. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> All right. See ya.